Hello everyone, this is Cody Lee of BlackCatBooks.org, author of I the Dragon, Cruel and Beautiful, Rabbit Hole, King Dio, and the upcoming Lauren Frey. So uh, someone posted this video on V today, and I I, uh, I watched like a minute of it and was just kind of taken aback by the uh, by the audacity of this complete zoomer, this complete ignorant little shit who thinks he uh, has insightful, who thinks he offers, who thinks he's offering an insightful commentary on Super Mario sixty four and its legacy. This is uh, this is something else. You know what I hate. Super Mario 64, here's why. Hang on. You know what I hate? Super Mario 64. And look at the fucking, look at the fucking Hollow Knight background, like, every fucking time. Like, you guys have one game, one game that's about as good as the average Nintendo title. And here you are, like, plastering it onto everything, like it's something spectacular. Well, you know what? Hollow Knight can't stand up to Super Metroid. It can't stand up to Dread. It can't stand up to, like, the Castlevania games. Like, come on. Or, here's why. Can't stand up to Zelda. Can't stand up to any... Let's crack a lucky Toxic Crew. My name is Toxic Quid, and Super Mario 64 has recently come into my life, and I hate it, I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. I may be spoiled rotten with, quite frankly, better 3D platformers with gems like A Hat in Time... A <laughs> Hat in Time?! Are you fucking kidding?! A Hat in Time is an inferior version of Super Mario Sunshine, which is an inferior version of Super Mario 64. Like, A Hat in Time? Are you serious? Hell, even Banjo-Kazooie, but... Even Banjo-Kazooie? Is he implying that Banjo-Kazooie isn't, like, one of the all-time goats when it comes to 3D platformers? Like, it's one of the only games that I would say is about on par with Super Mario 64. Uh, I I greatly value Banjo-Kazooie. Why are you are you uh, shitting my barren bird that, that much? is terrible, in my opinion. I know that is a huge claim to make, but I believe I found the root of my problem. It's the controls. Yep, he never learned the controls. Just... Yep, typical Star Fox Zero style. Like, oh man, I, I can't, I can't handle the control scheme, so it sucks. Suck. And no, it's not limited to one area, or it's not just one or two main problems. It's everything as a whole. Interested? Here, let me show no. you my thoughts. No, uh, anti-interested. <laughs> Oh, and these are just my opinions. You have yours, I have mine. That should be obvious. Don't be an ass. Uh oh. Uh oh. Yeah. Don't don't respond to this video, Harmon Smith. Don't don't you dare record record a live reaction to this like asinine fucking video. Don't call this guy out on his shit. Hey, Mario reacts to your abnormally sized thumb when it manipulates the left stick. I'm not gonna beat around the bush. Mario is slippery while moving, like <laughs> abnormally slippery when compared to his more recent outings. This is a huge problem because it makes doing precise platforming, which is required in some areas, nearly impossible. How is that impossible? Tell Look you at this! How many times I died on that first Bowser level because of how stupidly small the platform is to get that first. Look at that thing! It's it's the width of the entire section of the. <sighs> You've seen me live stream this game several times, right? You've seen me get that same red coin over and over and over again. I never struggle with it, right? Like I just go straight down there, uh, jump across the jump across the uh, the gap, and you know go back and get it. Like it's not complicated. Red coin, but we're gonna get to that later. What the game is telling me with these super slippery Mario controls is that when he starts moving, he wants you to keep. Moving. What is this? A Sonic game? No. What? So, um, so he just doesn't learn. He just doesn't want to like deal with uh, controls that are slightly different than what he what he's used to. I'm not even sure like what he's comparing this to because um, I don't think 64 controls all that differently from uh, from Odyssey. Like Odyssey is a bit slower, but. Um, Wonder we couldn't find Luigi for 21 years. We assumed we were playing as Mario, but clearly we are playing as fucking Luigi because of how slippery he is. All right, that's enough. 
That's why we have so many momentum-based attacks, like the dive and long jump, as well as the flip jump with the sub said momentum, as well as stuff like the wall jump, which I consider momentum-based, seeing as in my two runs of the game, I can only get it to work with a running start or doing something like a flip jump. So, so, so he can't even do a wall jump, and he's, he's blaming the game for this. Unbelievable. Otherwise, I just jump into the wall like a Nimrod, and I don't want to look like a Nimrod in a Mario game, or any game for that matter. <laughs> what? In my mind, I consider that just bad game design. The fact oh, that man, that it doesn't play Mario itself, so it's bad. Clearly was designed for more open area exploration stuff, and that just doesn't mesh well with around a third of the levels, and even more sections and even more levels make this shit unbearable. Legit, I think the only people this benefits are the speedrunners, but considering that I'm experiencing this for the first time in the 3D All-Stars pack, I can't even do all the fancy movements in the first place, so it doesn't really apply to me. I will say that despite the ground control being hella imprecise in my opinion, hella. I really can't say the same thing for the underwater controls. Honestly, I might be already in the small minority by saying this, but I absolutely love the underwater controls. Those, unlike the grounded controls, are not only... Who criticizes the uh, underwater controls in Super Mario 64? No one. Like, I have never in my life heard anyone say that uh, Super Mario 64 has weird water controls. That's just not a thing that people, people say. Responsive, but discourage mashing, which I love, lets you roam around in 3D space better than in the air. Yes, we'll get to that too. But I also like the little loophole formed with the restriction of the life bar being the air meter as well, so when you come back to the surface, it all comes back, eliminating the need for coins or those little floating hearts around some levels. I did find myself exploiting the hell out of this, especially when learning the ropes in Jolly Roger Bay. Legit, I think the underwater controls aren't bad at all. Sure, they are a bit slow, but the only issues that I could find are overall speed and the camera. This is supposed to be why he doesn't the like the game. The crock of shit, and I will definitely talk about that soon, because that's a really big issue in this game. Okay, so we've covered land traversal, we've covered sea traversal, now let's talk sky traversal. And for this one, our only real viable option is the wing cap power up. And my god, this sucks. This might have just been me, but I could never get as high as I wanted to. I stalled out a bunch, and coupled with the horrendous camera in some areas, namely the secret castle star wing Mario over the rainbows, I could safely say that this shit sucks. I could get past the controls in some of these instances <laughs> if falling off the map in this sub area because I was bumped on a platform when I should have been landed safely boots me out to the outside the goddamn castle causing me to trudge all the way back up to the top floor, do some parkour to get to that tiny little area because triple jumps don't work for some reason, all to reattempt it again with these same god awful controls. I get that it's not used often enough, so making the controls more fluid wasn't exactly the biggest priority for them. I get that they were trying to emulate the Cape Feather from Mario World in 3D, but the context that this power up used, in my opinion, were handled poorly. Except for one area. And I know I said I'd keep this section brief, but looking how far I've gone already with this section, why not indulge just a little bit more? Shifting Sandland is not my favorite level in the game, not by a wide Hello. This is so fucking boring to watch. Like, all... Oh, man, the game sucks, but but why? I, I still don't know. Let's see. Oh, here we go. Let's skip ahead. For each world from worst to best, excluding Castle Stars and the Bowser levels. Number 15, TikTok Clock. 14, Dire Dire Docks. 13, Snowman Land. 12, Wet Dry World. 11, Rainbow Ride. 10, Big Boo's Haunt. 9, Lethal Lava Land. 8, Tiny Huge Island. 7, Cool Cool Mountain. 6, Hazy Maze Cave. 5, Jolly Roger Bay. 4, Wamp's Fortress. 3, Shifting Sandland. 2, Bob Bob Battlefield. And number 1, Tall Tall Mountain. Yes, I like Tall Tall Mountain. The monkey is funny, don't at me. As most of you who played Mario 64 know, each level has six missions with a secret star that shows up after getting 100 coins. Some of these worlds are better than others, namely Dire Dire Docks and Lethal Lava Land are ass at finding a... Bowser levels are horseshit. For one, they are exclusively gauntlet-style level designs with <laughs> really narrow platforms in some instances. And yeah, I know that they're supposed to be the big challenges, but having such a radical departure from mostly open level design, especially in the early game, pisses me off because of how difficult it is for me to adjust to it. And I said this <laughs> Wait, what? Off. It's different, so it's terrible? Is he serious? What a spur. 
but god damn these aren't polished at all. That first Bowser level has that funny ha ha platform that I kept dying off of because of Luigi's controls. The second one has some troubles with depth perception and some poorly placed platforms, and the third one introduces these gravity defying walkways as well as some obstacles that seem unavoidable, like a piranha plant that shows up at the beginning in a walk that guards a linearly small hallway. Out of the three, I do prefer the second Bowser level purely because of how good I was at it. It also helps that I was <laughs> Wait, what? a friend of mine and that Purely because of how good I was at it. Definitely helped lighten the mood. But that also leaves Bowser's boss battles, and they are all the same. Grab his tail, spin him right round, baby, right round, and hit the bombs. Honestly, I hate these because of how imprecise the controls are, and when I'm sure I spot it in the right way that would leave a direct path from Bowser to the bombs, he just goes off the cliff and comes right back. I mean, just look at the footage here. I'm really struggling with this one. Sure, I know there are people who could do a first try, but seeing as I couldn't do it across both of my playthroughs, I really just digress. But with that, that's all I really have to say on the level <laughs> side. So let's wrap it up with the objectively worst part of Mario 64, the camera. Oh no, the, the first the first 3D platformer ever has a bad camera. Oh man, this destroys the entire experience. Fuck the camera, I hate it so fucking much. It is legitimately one of the worst cameras I have ever seen, and there have been quite a few contenders. Yeah, I know it's one of the first to pioneer it, and yeah, I know it's a bit crude, but riddle me this. When is it ever okay to restrict camera movement in an open area? Because that is exactly what happens in some of these levels. Bob on Battlefield, TikTok Clock, Snowman's Land, Wet Dry World, and even more restrictor camera movement. The only area that I can recall not having these limitations outside the Bowser levels is Rainbow Ride. Rainbow Ride! Imagine that. In other levels, if I couldn't get to the right camera angle I wanted, I would have to legit go the other way around. And even then, it doesn't always work. The camera is abysmal. The only saving grace it has is that the fact that it's a somewhat physical entity in the form of camera lacquer like too, but even then, that's not really saying much. In enclosed spaces like this area in Big Boo's Haunt, having a fixed camera is pretty good, but honestly, I think that Big Boo's Haunt was one of the only areas I didn't really have camera trouble. But in other areas, namely TikTok Clock, Tiny Huge Island, and Hazy Maze Cave, they can be a huge bother. All three of these areas have really randomizers. I've seen stats. What a boring fucking video. Just long session sections where he just complains about the game, like not being able to play it properly because he sucks. Like it was. It's pretty obvious just by watching the uh, the gameplay footage that this is this is someone like on a level lower than DSP, right? This is someone like a David Jaff style critique, like that. That's how lowly I think of this guy and his opinion. Like, unbelievable! What an absolute joke.